Hello and welcome to Negative Feedback. First of all, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you need a website, a domain or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Yeah. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at something that I've never particularly been interested in, which is a toy camera, and more specifically, the Holger 120 GCFN. But most importantly, it's pink. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, there's two now. It's further than you think to roll it on. Oh no! So I don't know how like <laughs> how much space you have until you like make an error with how much you roll on. Like I'm a bit past the three, but it's still in the window. I think that works. I've got an idea. It can only go well. So on this camera you, you have like a, a dial where you can change the flash gel. There's a red setting and there's a lovely red wall there. What would happen if they took a picture of Louis with the red on red? Who knows? Well, you will in a few seconds. Now is this a, a seven person shot or is this a mountain shot? Or it does in between even work. I'm gonna go nearly mountain. Here, there's a, there is a Holger picture here, but I can't tell if it's like the the Holger picture, the Holger picture, or the Holger picture. I reckon maybe if I go further away. It is scaring me a bit that it sounds like it's on bulb, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So we're currently a bit scared that the shutter speed is on the wrong setting. There's two options, N and B. N for normal, B for bulb. It kind of sounds like it might be on bulb, but I'm hoping that it just sounds a bit funny and that it's actually okay, because otherwise all the images would probably be blurry. Uh, we should find out because we're on the last photo now and then I'll be able to open the back and actually have a look at the mechanism. I feel like this is, it's not, it's a bit tighter than I'd normally take a photo, but I don't really want to stand in the road. And I'm just hoping that the viewfinder is somewhat accurate and it actually comes out how I hope and not even tighter, because that would be a shame. You know what, I'm going to take it in the road. So we've just finished up the first roll, which I already had loaded. So now we've got to reload it, which I thought I'd show you how. By no means do I exactly know what I'm doing. It's one of the more unusual cameras I've had to load, but I think it's pretty simple. This side doesn't even have a catch. Basically just trying to get the tension as tight as possible. And then you're just winding on until the stuff appears in the little red screen. I think that's the one. It's like that tiny mark. Yeah. 
So I've never really been a fan of toy cameras. Uh, I've always kind of had the, the thought of why wouldn't you just take this photo with a good lens and it'd probably end up better. Uh, so I'm kind of actually really hoping that my mind has changed a bit after using this today. I'm already seeing how it can be fun to use something different. I guess it's, it will be a good, fun little task and composing with something where you can't really make everything out is interesting but if that photo could have been such a great photo how much better could it have been if I took it on one of my favorite cameras instead with a really good lens but maybe that's part of the fun pretty odd <laughs> So I just finished up my second roll, uh, which is hopefully enough material for me to decide whether I liked it or not. So now join with me to future George, who will share his thoughts on the finished images. So I think there's definitely some positives and negatives after looking at the images. First of all, I think it's pretty hard to ignore that pink vignette which has taken a lot of the frames hostage. I guess you could crop in a bit to kind of ignore it, but it is a bit of a problem considering I wasn't factoring for cropping in when I was taking the photos. However, I have to say I'm pretty surprised at the actual sharpness of the images. Well, mainly in the centre of the images, uh, it kind of loses all sharpness the further from the centre you go, but in the middle it's actually really sharp. I think the thing that I most disliked was the distortion, which wasn't apparent in every shot, but some of the photos that had straight lines you could really tell where they really got warped into kind of this almost circular kind of distortion. That's something I really not want to work with. I really like having straight lines, so that really put me off. I would be interested in trying out some of the other flash settings. I do think that's a really cool feature, having that, that kind of carousel of different flash gels. I think that's a really cool feature, and I'm sure there's some more ways to utilize that that I didn't get to fit in this time. Let me know if you'd like to see me give the camera to some of my friends and kind of make it the negative feedback camera challenge to see what some of my friends could make with the limitations of a plastic camera. And finally, I'd like to thank Squarespace again for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for an easy solution to building a website for your photographic portfolio, or even a web store, definitely look no further than Squarespace. You can also get 10% off if you use the code negative feedback. So I guess that's all for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.